Calaroga Shark Media. Hey, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. Jimmy Kimmel not happy with the results of the Emmys. He tweeted, the results of the Emmys were totally unfair in the category of late NIT show, two exclamation points, sad, rigged, Polls say I won by a lot. He tagged John Stewart, Stephen Colbert, and Seth Meyers on it. I think I did, uh, when I was half asleep the other night, get all the winners in except the winner of Outstanding Comedy Series, the nominees Abbott Elementary, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Murders, Palm Royale, Reservation Dogs, What We Do in the Shadows, and obviously because The Bear, which is not a comedy, uh, won like almost every award, surely The Bear must be the Outstanding Comedy Series, right? No. Hacks. <laughs> So let me get this right. Everybody in The Bear, which is not a comedy series, was fantastic and won Best Comedian Emmys, Best Comedic Actors, and all that. But overall, the series is not the best. How does that work? Lorraine Newman was not happy with The Bear. She said, every time I think about The Bear being in the comedy category for the Emmys, I can feel an ulcer developing. Um, I agree with you. I'm also going to point out many things can be true at the same time. Lorraine Newman's daughter is named Hannah Einbinder, who stars in <laughs> Hacks. Yeah, Hannah's one of those low-key uh, Nepo babies. You know, if she were Hannah Newman, you might be like, hey, I wonder if her mother is a famous Hollywood actress. But, you know, use somebody else's name and nobody notices. Doesn't mean you're not talented. I'm just saying it's a little easier to get a better agent. And if you have a better agent, you know what's actually going on. And there's also a little bit of like, uh, you know, hey, uh, fellow radio executive friend, would you mind, uh, you know, giving my kid an internship? That kind of stuff happens. Doesn't mean you're not good at it, but let's be real. A lot of Nepo babies out there right now in Hollywood. Wow. No luck for Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb, if it is indeed over, and it looks like it is, has ended its run as the show with the most outstanding comedy series nominations, 11, without a win. Curb was nominated for four Emmys this year, including Outstanding Comedy Series, Loss, Outstanding Lead Actor for Larry David, a loss. In the end, Curb went 12 seasons, a total of 55 Emmy nominations. They won two outstanding single camera picture editing for a comedy series in 2012 and for directing way back in 2003. Maya Rudolph, Seth Meyers, Kristen Wiig, and Bowen Yang were the presenters for the award for Outstanding Writing for a Variety Special before they gave the award to Alex Edelman. They gave the business to dear friend and mentor Lorne Michaels, who's been nominated for and lost the Emmy 85 times. He's never won. Kristen Wiig said, Lorne, look at me. You do a value. You are worthy. You are not and have never been a loser, even though you lost a lot. Maya Rudolph said, each and every one of those 85 times you lost, you were robbed. Bowen Yang said, Lauren, it gets better. Just because SNL didn't work doesn't mean your next idea won't. Keep dreaming. I like how he said Lauren, because anytime I run a transcript on this podcast, anytime I say Lauren, it comes up as Lauren. It often also transcribes my own name as Chenny Mac, C-H-E-N-N-Y Mac. John Stewart won the 23rd Emmy win of his career. So was he part of this Emmy? I, I feel like this was the year he wasn't on. I'm confused. Anyway... He's reconsidering his future with The Daily Show and said, my feeling is this election will never end, so why would I leave? How could I leave? I won't be allowed to leave until this election, so we're all on ground to some sort of calcified nubs. We're looking forward to it being awful. Now, this article here says The Daily Show is named Best Talk Series for the second year in a row after Trevor Noah's final season. Last night's award marked Stewart's first Emmy win in over a decade, but wasn't there a full year of no John Stewart? I'm confused. Anyway, Stewart gave the acceptance speech, so I guess he did win, and he said, To have the opportunity to work with this incredibly talented group once a week, it really made my Mondays. Adding that Ronnie Chang, Michael Costa, Jordan Klepper, and Desi Lydic kick ass. Michael Ian Black, part of Have I Got News For You on CNN. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I'll watch that on the DVR maybe tonight. Black posted a note of gratitude to his Substack a few hours before filming the first episode, thinking about the fact that it's been literal years since I had a steady TV gig and the fact that I was ready to give up entirely when this thing fell into my lap. Most of us are just trying to figure out something about ourselves and our world. Maybe that sounds highfalutin, but isn't that the nature of all art, to cast our line into the wide waters of the world and see what we catch? Isn't that the crux of being a human? He then joked how the show will probably be canceled in six to eight weeks. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd love to have for the same kind of cultural cachet that Jon Stewart did during the Bush years on The Daily Show. That's sort of, did you hear what Jon Stewart said? If we could get some of that, I'd be thrilled. I'm not an activist, will never be an activist because I don't have those kinds of organizational skills. I don't have the kind of footwear where I'm going to be out here marching around holding up placards and shouting, this is what democracy looks like. It's just not me, but I do think I can make contributions the way I make contributions, which is by saying dumb stuff on Twitter or now on CNN. 
Colin Joe spoke about the ferry he bought with Pete Davidson and said is absolutely the dumbest and least thought through purchase I've ever made in my life. The way I justified it is the, for the amount of money we're putting into buying it on just a basic square footage level. If you found the right place for it to be, you were essentially buying a building on its side that's 65,000 square feet. So around New York, that's a very good price per square foot. Despite two years of renovations, it still looks like a Staten Island ferry. <laughs> Joe said, it's possible the ferry could still end up being functional as a boat. It would just require his staff to run it, though he's not sure that's something he wants to worry about. He joked, I'm sure our insurance company would love it. Maybe they'd love it because it would get them out of the contract, because it requires a lot of people to move it. At this point, the ferry has to be doctored towed. The engines aren't operable, but Joe said it could be operable within weeks if they wanted it to be. He said he had soft-floated the idea past his wife, Scarlett Johansson. She was just like, wait, so you own this boat now? <laughs> she obviously sees the value in it, but I also think she's like, it's interesting because now it's become a defining thing for you guys and an interesting thing for you guys. So you should take it seriously and figure out the best version of it because for better or worse, it's going to reflect on you. Joe said, we don't care because we're comedians. Dion Cole's got a Netflix special tonight. Or today. I don't know. What time do they post these things? They probably post them at midnight. It's probably up now. Why don't you watch it now? This one is called OK Mr. Dion Cole recalls the telltale signs of aging, bedroom mishaps, dating deal breakers, and more. This was filmed back in May as part of the Netflix is a Joke Festival. Jessica Kirsten is getting a special on Hulu. By the way, I saw that Hulu is branding their comedy things Hulurious, as in hilarious, Hulurious. Uh, as I posted on threads where I'm at Daily Comedy News, did no comedian say to the Hulu executives, dude, that is really hacky, or is the money that good? Anyway, Jessica Kirsten is getting a special. The premiere date is being kept under wraps, as if it's like some big secret. That, to me, means they're planning on signing some other people, and they don't know where they're going to slot Jessica yet. Like, for example, if they sign, I don't know, Dave Chappelle and Joe Rogan, maybe they'll move Jessica's date. That's what that means. In a statement, Jessica Kirsten said, I'm honored to be part of the Disney family and that Hulu has chosen to feature my next special as part of their comedy initiative. People always ask me, is it hard to be a female comedian? I always say, I don't know. You should ask them. Hilarious kicks off in November with Jim Gaffigan. They've also signed up Bill Burr, Roy Wood Jr., Alana Glazer, Otsko Atkanska. They are not messing around. Kathy Griffin believes former President Trump would, quote, pick comedians off one by one if elected to another term. She fears a list of personal targets, including comedians. She said he's going to pick us off one by one like bowling pins, and I'm not kidding, and I'm not being paranoid. You're being paranoid. Veerd Oz will host the International Emmys, which apparently is a thing. Who knew? They take place November 25th. Where would you host the International Emmys? New York City. I mean, I guess New York City is part of the world. I just thought they'd get a little more international. Who knows? Veer says, I'm so happy to be hosting the International Emmys. It's a massive, prestigious night to uphold makers from across the world that I believe is making the best content. I know firsthand it can be life-changing. And The Hollywood Reporter wrote an article about Late Night, and they spotlighted some numbers. Five years ago, The Late Show finished first in total viewers with 3.81 million. Jimmy Fallon had 2.44 and Kimmel 2.04 million. In 2023-24, Late Show was down to 2.6 million. Again, that first number was 3.8. That's a decline of about 32% from 2018. Kimmel moved into second with 1.82 million viewers, still down 11%. He also had a Monday Night Football lead in once a week. Fallon down the third, 1.43 million, losing 41% of its audience. Wow. At 1230, Seth, with 983,000 viewers, was down by about 470,000 viewers. That's 32%. Feels more like half. I guess it's not. Somebody's better at math than I am. After Midnight is averaging about 730,000 viewers over its first five months. Brian Stetler reported in L.A. Magazine that James Corden's show was losing 15 to $20 million per year. Yeah, that's why you don't replace that. Yikes. And that's your daily comedy news for today. If you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it. They might like it, too. And if you would like this thing without commercials, uh, check the link in the show notes. It'll tell you how you can do that. And I'll see you tomorrow.